Nice to see you. Uh, I am hoping I can balance this somewhat better. This color scheme is bad. It's so, oh no, it's so blown out. Hmm, well how do you do that? Uh, we are live, I believe, yeah. Nope, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Back, back, are we live? We are, okay. Let's see, is there some sort of settings? Nope, that ain't it. Nope, burp, nope, audio, no, do do do, huh? Wow, hello. Hi, Dinah, how are you? I'm glad that you see me. That means this is working. Uh, I'm parked not on my normal block, not on the lovely Pineapple Street today. I'm parked on Columbia Heights, I believe is the name of the street. It is a uh, super, it's a different spot than I normally get. It's a 10.30, 8.30 to 10 o'clock spot. And I have to sit in the car in case the uh, the street the street sweeper comes, if the street sweeper comes, then I gotta move the car to that side of the street, and then back to this side of the street. If it never comes, I'll never have to get out of the car. It's uh, or I never have to move. Eventually, I will need to leave the car, alive or dead, but uh, not because of the street sweeper. In that case, if I die. But, um, yeah. Oh, so how are things? Uh, let's see. Uh, I came back from LA a week ago. Did I? Less than a week ago. Yes. Uh, or exactly a week ago. Death is the ultimate street sweeper. If only. The, uh. Death is the ultimate life sweeper. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I came back from LA a week ago. Going to uh, this is the first time I've had to sit in the car since then uh, for parking reasons. Um, I already saw the ticket man walk by, so that was a relief that I was in the car and I didn't get a ticket. Um, but uh, and the nice thing is that when I have this spot, I don't have to move it back later in the day. Uh, you know, it's, this is just this one finite little window of parking time. Um, let's see, notable things. Saw the saw the guy who gave the tickets. He walked by, and then the next thing I saw uh, was John Krasinski, the actor from The Office, um, or maybe you know him better as uh, the guy from the movie about being quiet. Uh, or um, the guy who plays Jack Ryan in the uh, similarly named Amazon show. Anyway, this neighborhood, it's like being in Hollywood. There's so many stars in the sky. Because right, right down the street is where uh, Johnny... Nope, not Johnny Damon, Matt Damon uh, has an apartment. A floor and a half in a gigantic building. Um, <coughs> it's not warm here. I wish it was. It's going to be a high of 50 degrees today. It's nothing to sneeze at, but also not great. Um, but uh, I preferred the weather in California, if I had to be honest. But I think that's one of its main draws in general, is people like the way it looks most of the time. I, I understand occasionally there's some rain, some wildfires, some uh, earthquakes and mudslides and other natural disasters. But for the most part, people are like, look at the sky. The sky is super dick. The sky is off the hizzy. Um, I was going to say, I keep meaning to post that I'm going to. It's too hot. No, you're saying it's too hot there, Dinah? I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, you know, is it better than New York where it's like freezing cold and then hot? Or is it just sort of like mostly warm? Uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, yesterday I, I got to do some fun, uh, VR stuff. Uh, 
got to try on some avatars and mess around in a in a fun uh, uh, VR world and do some improv in VR. That was kind of a, a novel experience. Experience. Um, I think VR technology, as far as like being able to do presentative performance in VR for people watching in a VR space, uh, has a, has some interesting potential. But uh, uh, man. It's hard to wear those goggles and then take them off and look okay. It's disorienting and you've got like a big pillow imprints all over your face. But uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience for sure, to be sure. Hello friends who are watching. Uh, unlike my, when I do it on the, uh, wait, what does this say? Oh, I see. Uh, unlike when I do this on Facebook, it doesn't show me who's watching, so... Uh, please chime in, say say hello, let me know that you're here, so that I'm not just talking to myself. Um, yeah, so it's chilly, a pleasant day here in New York City. As always, I'm being forced to sit in my car, idling. Uh, now, that's always been a, a sore spot for me, is that uh, they we have to sit in our cars. It's cold, or it's too hot, so you need the air conditioning or the heat, and... Um, because we're spoiled. And the city also has very strict no idling policy, but every day, due to its own GD rules, we all got to be sitting in our cars. I suppose they don't need to be on, but everyone wants to have, like I said, the heat or the cold. So you don't want to run your battery down. All that all that car nonsense. And uh, But, you know, no idling, but by their own mandate, we got to be idling. What are you going to do? Um... I wish I had brought my sketchbook, but I didn't. It's just how it goes. Uh, anyhow. Yeah, I saw that they're giving... They're giving... A, apparently, I saw there's a way to make money. Uh, the thing is, is the... It, the uh, equivalent to stuffing envelopes. But there, there was a thing on, like... I forget what website it was. that said, like, you can get money from the city just going around reporting idling vehicles. So like, you know, basically, uh, reporting all, you know, giant trucks that are just sitting there idling for hours on end. Now, of course, when they were building, uh, the courthouse over here, they used to just have dudes idling there all the time. You know, just like a guy in a giant SUV, you know, they didn't have the, um, uh, Whatchamacallit. They didn't have the gate and the, you know, automated things uh, in and out for cars. So they just had a dude sitting in like a giant Bronco idling 24-7 uh, listening to the radio and then like a car would come and he'd have to back the car out of the way. So then my... It felt very third world. Um, but I've seen that at multiple uh, police stations and things like that where they, uh, they have a car to stop people from driving their cars into the area. And they have to have someone in the car, and the person in there is just sitting there burning dinosaurs. So, the hypocrisy of this town, I tell you. Um, what else is going on? What's in the news? Uh, looks like New York State's gonna fuck up its medical marijuana or its legal marijuana bullshit. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, I bet New Jersey beats us to it. And then a lot be lots of like, don't go to New Jersey and bring back that weed. That's not legal weed. And much like everywhere else, it'll be like, yeah, well, it is legal weed. So suck it. Uh, and there'll be lots of court cases. And they'll be like, we're not prosecuting it and all that nonsense. Very frustrating, though because it just seems so backwards. Of course, New York feels like a very liberal place to the rest of the country because of uh, how uh, progressive and whiny New York is. But um, the rest of the state is, you know, crazy red and backwards and against everything. Now, that may be a blanket statement. I love blanket statements. <laughs> but, uh, you know, typically upstate New York is very conservative and does all kinds of... Uh, voting against things that the city would like 
but uh, unfortunately, that's just the, that's just the way it goes. Is it is also corrupt? You're correct, Diana. The uh, I think the saddest thing is you know De Blasio, this like super progressive mayor, progressive mayor. Uh, I'm doing a lot of air quotes today. Please forgive me. Uh, he, you know, promising to rein in all these entitlements and all this other stuff. And then uh, there's been a huge explosion in placard abuse, which is like parking placard abuse, which is like all these people get these things that uh, absolve them from having to pay for any... Um, uh, or like not, they just disregard parking laws and they just put this like placard in the in the windshield and it's just like oh yeah, I'm allowed to park here. There's a guy in my block. There's all these around the corner. There's like four or five doctors that just like well, I'm an I'm an important doctor. I'm on call. Here's the placard. Don't give me a ticket. I park here whenever I want. So uh, that was supposed to be something that was reined in and then they apparently the city lost some lawsuit. Uh, and they're just not enforcing it. So, like, basically the police uh, word on the street is the, they give, the police give their family members placards so they don't have to obey the, the parking rules and whatever. Um, so it's just a drag in this city that's already so uh, overwhelmed with cars, especially this neighborhood. Because, you know, this neighborhood is changing. And like I said, Matt Damon bought this apartment over here. Uh, and um, all these watchtower buildings are getting converted. These Jehovah's Witnesses buildings are getting converted into condos. And, and as such, they're bringing more cars to the neighborhood. There's no place to put extra cars. Uh, as is evidenced by the fact that I have to sit in this GD car every uh, week to avoid getting a ticket. So... Uh, it's just, it's just crazy. And now they're going to do this congestion pricing thing, which is going to be like, we'll see, we'll see if that actually happens because, um, you know, there's all these people who live out of the city and they, they drive into downtown. They're going to have to pay extra money. Um, I just don't see it really being, uh, a super effective in the long run. I think they're going to the powers that be, and that's rich people who live outside of the city, will uh, flood the coffers to of the politicians to kill that. Because, again, they are corrupt. Your point stands. I, I agree. Uh, it is a, it is almost a nice day outside. Forty-three degrees here in Brooklyn Heights, New York City. Sitting in my car, trying not to uh, fall asleep and wake up hours later, like a rumble stiltskin in my car. <laughs> um, you know, Donna, you're saying I should trade my car for weed. That would be, I wonder how much weed I could get for it. I mean, it's probably worth $15,000. So it's hard to say, but uh, you know, I'd entertain a weed offer for it. No, I'm not talking about an insulting offer of, you know, a pre-rolled joint or, you know, even a few joints. I would have to be a, probably a, you know, a lot, something I could flip for more money, <laughs> I guess, if I was going to do a weed trade. But, uh, Oh, that's right. Not Rumpelstiltskin. Thank you. Thank you. What was... That was a... Oh, that's right. There was a Rumpelstiltskin reference in a, a video I watched yesterday, which is probably why I have it on my mind. Yes. No. I did mean Rip Van Winkle. Uh, although Rip Van Winkle drank with the mountain men, right? That's, the, that's his thing. So what would be the equivalent of me sitting in, I guess, drinking some sort of sewer wine... <laughs> with the Brooklyn Heights hobos waking up hours later oh, it'll be sort of a compressed version of not years later my question with Rumpelstiltskin or not Rumpelstiltskin, Rip Van Winkle is uh, no, it would be the opposite 
I was wondering if he did light, if he traveled at light speed, but he ages and everyone else ages at the same time, right? He just has disappeared or no, does he come down and he's much older? So drinking with the mountain men made him age, but no one else did. Or did he wake up and his children are old? I'll have to revisit this, this, uh, true story and figure it out. I think it's that he was gone forever, right? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm imagining not waking up like and having, you know, people be like, you were gone for so many years. If I fell asleep in this car, I think it would just get towed. I'd wake up in, uh, the, the parking lot. That would be funny if they did that. I don't think they would really do that. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, hey, Dinah, I, you know, uh, the, the dish towels I brought home were a hit, as, I, as were the socks. So thank you for taking me to that store. Uh, it was a, a good knickknackery. I wish I had taken more time to, to look at the art. Can you buy the art off the walls there? Is there like, so, like uh, prices and stuff? Or is it just, whoa, that's attractive. Um, is it just you know, for display, an artist's collection. I would imagine you'd be able to pay money for art. That's how it usually works. Uh, not that I saw anything there that I was, was like, I gotta have that, but, um, and I couldn't afford it if I did. Oh, there's a website. Fair, fair enough. What can't they put on the web these days? Internet. Um, Speaking of that, I got to do another episode of Lou Reed. I was looking for stuff the other day, and you know, just it's so easy to fall down an internet hole. We were like, "What's that? What's that?" Um, especially on Reddit, there's always like weird crossover uh, communities and people referencing other things. Um, oh, well, you're saying the art is hundreds of dollars. Well, you know, that's uh, art typically either costs nothing because people undervalue their work or it costs too much. And occasionally you come across an artist that's like right in that sort of like, I'm starting to price my art reasonably, but it's, you know, reasonable still and not a gajillion dollars. Cause I, you know, I either have something I'm in demand or I'm being unreasonable. Um, you know, a lot of print artists do kind of reasonable art. One of my, one of my favorite New York art things is there was that dude whose name escapes me. Uh, and he used to sell, he would take, he took tons of pictures of bodega signs, New York bodega signs, which were uh, of a certain variety were, um, uh, sorry, I'm looking to see if, if the street sweeper is coming. I don't think it is. Uh, but they were like red, yellow, and blue. And this guy made all these um prints or like a screen prints of these on wood blocks of the pieces of the signs. So they would, you know, it would be like say sandwiches or they'd have like palm trees or whatever. And, uh, that guy used to sell his little wooden blocks in Soho for like 20 bucks, New York Soho. Uh, and so I would buy them in groups of like six and then like you know, sell them as a triptych of kind of neat bodega uh, representation. It's very, very cool. But that's the kind of art that speaks to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, later he was selling bigger pieces, and I didn't like those as much. They make great gifts, especially for people who know something about New York. But uh, then you get, you know, people who are selling stuff for like 500 bucks and up. I know $500 is not a lot of money for some artists, but that's for sure. I, uh, uh, it, yeah, there's that guy, the artist that I really like on, um, uh, Instagram at Etsy, Daniel Ryan, um, who does a lot of, he does a lot of paintings I don't like, but he does a lot of paintings I do like. And the prints of the paintings are like absurdly reasonable. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, maybe eight bucks, 25 bucks, something in that range. They're always on sale. I think he, 
I don't know if he's producing as much art as he was before because he also went and got his, um, uh, I think he became a registered nurse or a nurse practitioner, registered nurse maybe. Um, you know, yeah, it's like, I, I, I guess that's probably a class you take or some sort of like art logistics where you learn how to value your art and figure out how much money goes into your sunk costs of actually learning how to apply the, the medium to the surface and, and do a, you know, a reasonable job that people could consider to be okay. Um, you know, like, or you could be like a Steve Keen who like just turns them out and just floods the market with $5 to $20 paintings. And it's just like, yeah, have at it. Uh, but I do like this guy, Daniel Ryan. He does make great, uh, and affordable prints. Um, and I actually own one of his paintings that was a gift to me by my maza. Uh, yeah, he does a lot of weird cats, but I liked it better. He used to do like a series of like very weird ones of like Batman as uh, the Guantanamo prisoner or Batman as JFK and Robin as uh, Jackie O. Uh, like reaching back on the car to get his brains and uh, a lot of very weird Batman ones a lot of very bleak um, hotel sign ones and was that really like his I think I was first drawn to his bleakness <laughs> his bleak series of the cute animals uh, with the horrible phrases and uh, thank you for sending me the link to that place I'll be sure to share it with Jody since she liked it so much. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, it is interesting, you know, I have, I have acquaintances who, uh, when I met them, were just like regular dudes, and now they are famous sculptors or whatever, make outlandish amounts of money. Uh, to make sculptures and I mean not to say that the sculptures aren't good they are good they're very interesting but it's just sort of when you hear that that's how they make a living it's like whoa <laughs> that's weird uh yeah so in the job hunt world I'm still looking for work uh I got bad news about a job yesterday that was a real drag but not when I was uh not expecting it, even though I thought I was an excellent candidate for the job. Uh, as I, I recently was reminded, you never know, you could be the best candidate for a job, and you know, it's just the guy before you got there ahead of you, uh, or you know, the, uh, the guy who's the hiring manager has a friend who needs to work more than he wants to hire the right person for the job, or whatever. Any, any combination of factors can lead to you not getting a job. Could be all these white power tattoos I have. I don't know. Uh, you know, it could be my constant use of racial slurs that I put into my language when I'm talking in job interviews. It's just a bad, uh, bad habit when I've been having trouble breaking. Uh, it could be the fact that, uh, you know, I'm always saying like, uh, if you give me this job, I'm going to murder you. Could be any of these things. It's hard to really pin down which one of these things is the reason that I'm not getting hired. Um, but more job applications today. It did put me into a uh, kick my butt a little bit on doing voiceover auditions because I hadn't done any for a while because I was having sort of a little moment of uh, despair. But... I did seven voiceover auditions yesterday. I'll probably try to do another four or five today if I get the chance. Uh, and then try to get in some resumes and, uh, you know, keep pressuring people. Amazon loves Reddit Nazis. I don't... Oh, I see what you're saying from your, your time in Seattle. That... Uh, that everyone there you felt I think was it you felt that all the guys there were like uh, programmers who had like hardcore uh, red pill incel 
issues, a lot of broism in the in the uh, Seattle coding world. Uh, thankfully, alt right alt right manosphere. Yes, that is that is a very good uh, a good descriptor. Um. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, as my mother once said, she said, I wish you were more of a sociopath because then I would be able to be, I'd be able to lie my way into jobs in a way that I'm apparently not, unable to do so now. <laughs> anyway, uh, tomorrow is my birthday. Isn't that exciting? So I'm uh, not looking forward to it. It's filling me with dread. Uh... But I'll have a party on Saturday and they will also fill me with dread. That's the other thing I have to do. I have to do a lot of preparing for my own birthday, uh, which is a drag. <laughs> yeah, do you have to be charming to be a sociopath, though? Uh, or he just, what is it if you're. Uh, what if you, I mean, what is it if you like hate people? But, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll ask my therapist when I go see her today. Oh, I see. You're saying, is, does sociopath have to be able to be like the Theranos lady and, like, trick people? Or can you just be a person who, like, is super driven and doesn't see the to see the consequences or care about the consequences? What is that? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to ask. Anyway, thank you for sitting in the car with me today. Uh, my time here in the car is almost over. I can see people in front of me are starting to get out of their cars, which is a signal for me to get out of my car because now it is safe as I will not get a ticket. So, thanks for watching. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep the stream going as I walk home. Oh, maybe, ooh, I've got my, uh, I'm getting out of the car. Oh. And the street sweeper never came, so it was a pointless thing to sit in the car and do nothing. Getting my scooter out of the car. That's how I got to here, was by scooter. Unfortunately, I don't think I can scoot here. Maybe we'll, we'll walk by and we'll show you the promenade here in New York City as I walk around. This is a very running, just chatting kind of thing. New York, and if you want to see the, uh, I'll take you a little, a little trip down here by, by the promenade. Now the promenade is featured in a lot of music videos. It's in the movie Manhattan, or is it Annie Hall? Uh, see the music. The I made love for the very first time. You can look that one up. <laughs> it's just a very famous uh, vista. New York. Let's see. How do I switch the view? Oh, like that. Yep, there's New York for you. There's Brooklyn Bridge. It's beautiful and lovely. And down there is Brooklyn Bridge Park, which used to just be all kinds of uh, industrial nonsense. Not nonsense, but it served its, pur its purpose back in the day. That's the price you pay to live in New York City. Sit in your car once in a while, unless you make enough money to not have to do that. Uh, and then you get to walk around. Oh, some sort of, some sort of New York City bird. Ah, it's, it's, it's one of our fantastic pigeons. And of course,